Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to our Neurotheology lecture series. I hope, inshallah, that you're finding this material interesting, even inspirational. And in our last lecture, we ended, I think, by making a very strong case that the brain has dedicated neural networks for spirituality and the religious experience. So now, this uh, last couple of lectures uh, are titled, This is Your Brain on Prayer. And uh, the focus now is going to shift to, okay, we've made the case that there are dedicated neural networks for spirituality. And the question becomes, what happens when we run the spirituality program? Does religious practice have effects beyond itself? So for example, when I run a program in my brain to wiggle my finger, I am presuming that that program does what it's supposed to do, but it probably does not have significant effects beyond itself, beyond this action of wiggling my finger. Now, how about running the spirituality program or activating the spirituality network that we've been talking about? Does it have effects beyond itself? Well, the scholars have always claimed yes, that religious practice in Islam is viewed as very multifaceted. One part of it, of course, is to show our obedience to our creator. However, the scholars have been strong in their claim that that is not the entire purpose, that we are not playing a cosmic game of Simon Says, where we're asked to do random things that have no effect beyond showing the obedience. Showing the obedience is a very important thing, but the, the sort of magic, if you will, of spirituality is that while we do that, there are effects above and beyond that, and that is part of God's mercy. And so scientists have begun investigating that question. What does prayer do to the brain and for the brain? And so here is a paper in Neuroscience Letters called Rewarding Prayers. And basically using functional MRI, what this paper found is that prayer activates the dopamine reward system. So this supports the hypothesis that religious prayer as a form of frequently recurring behavior, and we'll come back to this idea of frequently recurring behavior, is capable of stimulating the dopaminergic reward system in practicing individuals. So that is wonderful. What is this dopaminergic reward system? It is the system that gets activated, for example, let's say you do something great and you feel so good about it. That's the dopaminergic reward system. Let's say somebody gives you a wonderful bit of praise and you feel so happy and proud. That's the dopaminergic reward system. And the dopaminergic reward system is also involved in the rush and great feeling uh, of illicit drugs, for example. Uh, they also work uh, sometimes through the dopaminergic reward system. So prayer, not only am I bowing and kneeling and saying certain things, but when practiced regularly, it activates that dopaminergic system to make me feel good. And that's why the title of the paper is Rewarding Prayers. And um, again, a set of um, uh, blurbs here about uh, prayer that prayer activates reward systems. And this has certain functions like helping in top-down control or executive control. And this is the paper we were talking about that it activates the dopaminergic reward system. And another paper also found that it activates, again, different areas of the brain for, again, a sense of uh, fulfillment and reward. And so that there's an intrinsic reward in religious individuals uh, that comes from activating this uh, 
a spiritual system. And I'm not talking now about reward in the hereafter. I'm talking about the, the, the sense of happiness and fulfillment and pride and well-being and self-worth, all of those things that would be part of the uh, dopaminergic reward system activation. And there have been actually some very, very surprising findings that, for example, reduced pain sensation and reduced bold signal in religious prayer. So this research uh, used functional magnetic resonance imaging to scan the pain areas in the brain uh, in people who were praying versus people who had their brain occupied with something else, say doing a math problem. And it turns out that prayer actually reduces pain sensation and reduces the signal in the brain, the activation of the brain, when painful stimuli are inflicted on the person during prayer. And there's a very interesting nuance here. The pain intensity is reduced, and the pain unpleasantness is even more reduced. And this is during religious prayer compared to secular prayer. So again, I don't want you to think that because the brain was occupied in praying, people are less likely to notice the pain versus just sitting there and waiting for the pain. No, people were doing a secular prayer. Like for example, human beings are wonderful, human beings are wonderful, human beings are wonderful, versus a religious prayer like SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. And the neuroimaging results show that those who are believers and who indulge in religious prayer, they feel the brain is less active, the pain centers are less active, so the pain intensity is reduced, and the unpleasantness of the pain is even more reduced. So, you know, the, the old saying, I think it was the philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, that, um, you know, the pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Well, when you pray, the pain is reduced and the suffering is even more reduced. So you notice less pain and the experience itself is even less unpleasant than those who were involved in secular prayer. And very interestingly, most of our brain systems that mitigate pain go by the opioid dependent pathway. The, there's a pathway in the brain that is called the opioid pathway that inhibits pain. And that's why pain relieving drugs like morphine, for example, are opioids. And all of, all of us have heard about the opioid epidemic. Well, these opioid drugs are very good at relieving pain uh, because they activate the brain's opioid pathway. The brain has receptors that these drugs latch onto. Well, it turns out that mitigation of pain during religious prayer does not use the opioid pathway. It uses a pathway that we don't yet fully comprehend or have not fully mapped out. So just to show you that activating the religious network has multiple, multiple uh, effects above and beyond simply the religious practice itself, like bowing and kneeling and reciting the Fatiha. It, it activates the dopaminergic reward system. It activates the pain modulation pathway or a pain modulation pathway that is yet to be mapped out. And here's a very interesting paper uh, that looks at religion, spirituality, and health takes basically a review type approach to looking at all of the papers that this paper provides a concise but comprehensive review of research on religion and spirituality. And it turns out that activating the spirituality program has amazing effects on mental health, on behavior, and on physical health. So the spirituality program really goes way, way beyond the simple religious practice or the specific religious practice for which it is intended. We, of course, have seen this with fasting and the effects of fasting on both mental health and physical health in a different series that, um, that we did on the benefits of fasting. And now this 
series of research papers that is being reviewed here in this review work is focusing on prayer and the effects of prayer on the brain. So hopefully I have piqued your interest. I know this was a shorter introduction. I didn't want a very long lecture, but I think we have answered the question, does running the spirituality network have effects above and beyond itself? Definitely it does, and God knows best. And now in the next lecture, we will begin to explore some of these effects specifically based on this review paper and we'll be abstracting directly from it. So please join us for that. Salamu alaikum and God bless.